Hey, what's up YouTube? Chris Gardner here. Today, uh, just going to show you a little bit about how I've been using uh, Blender for 3D printing. Now, Blender is something I've talked about here to do more with, uh, you know, video effects and, and rendering, like virtual staging. I've got a video on how to do that for real estate, but this one's a little bit different. Um, after having done some 3D printing, you know, I already knew pretty well the interface of Blender, so I was hoping that I could start building my 3D products with that. And as you can see, I've got one little thing here. Made it for my son's third birthday, and it's just a little, you might recognize it, Paw Patrol uh, logo, you know, we got the paw. And I made this, you know, myself in, in Blender. Um, it was not on this computer, so I have a missing texture for um, the image I traced. So I was just going to show you a little bit about how I set this up for 3D printing. Now let's just let's just start a new thing right here. Now I'm in 2.91, uh, but it shouldn't really actually matter what you're in since the features we're using have been around a long time. You may just have to look in a different spot for them. What we want to do is go into our scene and set our units. Now, most of what I do is translated into millimeters, and so working from the millimeters that it normally is into millimeters is 0 0.001, and then we're going to change that unit of length into millimeters. And there we go. Now we have a pretty good scaling, so let's get rid of this. Let's just get rid of that. Um, and you may want to start working in orthographic view sometimes when you're doing this. Uh, let's just add a mesh um, cube. And now you see it's at 2,000 meters. Let's bring it down to um, something we print at. So let's call it uh, 15 millimeters. How about? There we go. Cube of 15 millimeter size. And let's just double check all that by going through, scale is set at 1, and there we go, 15 millimeter edge length. So really, you know, when you have this happening, you are with a pretty good setup ready to go. That's almost all you need to do, and then when you are finished your design, I've been doing these, I think there's some other formats you can bring to something like Cura, uh, which is what I've been using with my Ender 3 V2. You know whole new world that's going to open up for you. Tons of fun. Um, and if you're already familiar with a Blender software, this is how you can easily transition to to that. Uh, one thing I'd recommend is, you know, making sure that your scale is always applied before you send it out for printing. You know, so this should always be at one when you're finished. Uh, you know, make sure there's no hidden meshes. Make sure everything that you can see you want to print. You know, there's ways around that, but this just makes it a little easier. So I typically start a new file, and then that's my print version, and then I can go back to a specific, you know, iteration of a design if I've if I've made one. Uh, you know, like the Paw Patrol one, that, that one you saw, I, I had to redesign it a, a second time because I started off with not thick enough walls. So, you know, just consider your printing medium. So kind of work in increments of... You know, just depending on what your nozzle is and what you're printing, just just be considerate of that while you're at this design stage. Is all I'm saying because it's uh, it's important down the road. And uh, one super useful modifier has been the Boolean uh, union. So you know, you always want to have manifold geometry, so it's kind of it's sealed on all sides. Um, and so one example of that would let's say be we wanted to add this here and your slicing software may not always like having part of this box um, with geometry inside of this box so one way around that is to use this one it's a good thing you know the blender boolean modifier has gotten um, pretty good recently I think I heard about some updates they did of it so we're gonna go here uh, let's just add it to the other cube there are times where you may have to work with these figures um, in certain cases like when I made that Paw Patrol thing uh, adding complex outlines I made Jurassic Park one for my other son because he, he started getting jealous 
this doesn't always work as smoothly as you would hope. And so that's where finessing these figures come in. Okay, so we've made the one invisible. Now we're just working with a single object. So let's just move up. See, uh, let's apply that. We've got it. Union object solver fast zero overlap threshold. This was so. Let's apply it. And we've got that separated. Let's just scrap this thing. Good habit to get into so it doesn't get interfering with your slicing software or your printing. Uh, now let's just see the mesh and let's just make sure nothing comes in. So you see we've now got these two boxes joined and it got rid of anything in there that may have confused our software. And that's great. So from there we could go export STLs here. Now this is something selection only. If you want to select one object and export that only. Um, but I don't know if I just forgot I didn't press it or something, but it didn't seem to be as reliable as I had hoped. Um, as same with this apply modifiers. I would definitely make sure you apply your modifiers yourself and confirm your, you know, your geometry and, and all that, your mesh as we just kind of did on this simple situation. Um, and then because we set up our scale properly earlier, we can leave most of this basically as it is. Um, and your export, and you are basically good to bring it into your slicing software and take it away from there. So that's about it for this video. Uh, not much to it. Just a few things I've been working with. Thought I'd share a little bit about it. Thanks for watching, and hopefully some more videos coming your way soon.